Many Rails applications, including the framework itself, make heavy use of concerns. But if you're just getting into Rails, they can be pretty confusing to understand. Why do we need concerns? How do they work? And when do we use or even not use them? When I started learning Rails a few months ago, concerns were one of the topics that took a long time for me to understand. The API documentation doesn't help either. It starts with the assumption that the reader is already familiar with the problem they are trying to solve and goes on to provide the solution. It only adds to the confusion. This video explains why we need concerns, how to use them, and how they can help you write better code. So let's take a look at the problem concerns are trying to solve. Here we have two models, post and comment. In addition to the code specific to them, both of them contain the code that handles their visibility. The post class has visible to attribute, is visible instance method, and count all visible class method. The comment model also has the similar properties and methods. In addition to these two, there could be many other models that need to control their visibility. And it would be nice if there was a way to abstract all this code. Using a concern, you can extract the common logic from different classes into a reusable module. So the next question is, what is a concern? A concern is a module in Ruby that extends the active support concern module. They allow us to include modules with both instance and class methods. So instead of having one big class body, a concern lets you extract the implementation of a class or module in coherent chunks. As an example, here is a taggable concern. You can see that it marks itself as a concern by including the active support concern module. A concern provides two blocks, included and class methods. Any code inside the included block is evaluated in the context of the including class. For example, if post includes taggable, any code that's inside the included block will be evaluated as if it was written inside the post class. You can write class macros here such as uh, validations, associations, or scopes. Any methods defined here become the instance methods on the including class. The second block is class methods, which defines the class methods on the including class. So any method you add here will become a class method. Instead of the class methods block, uh, you can also create a nested module named class methods and create your methods here, which will become the class methods on the including class again. To extract the visibility code from the post and comment models, let's create a visible concern. This concern deals with an entity's visibility, concerning if it is visible or not. You can see I have added a new module called visible that extends from active support concern. In the included block, I've added the property visible to as well as the instance method is visible. Inside the class methods block, I've added the class method. To use this concern, you would include the module as usual in the class that needs that concern. Now, after including this concern, the common class gets the property, instance method, and the class method. So we don't need them anymore here. So let's get rid of that. Deleting code is always nice. So let's uh, do the same for the post class now. So before that, I've added a test so we can make sure it still works after including this concern. So inside the test class, here we created an instance of post. We make sure that we can fetch, set and get the visible to property and we can call the is visible method and count all visible class method. Here we are calling it on the post with a capital P. So we'll include the visible concern. For that, let's just run the test so we can make sure our changes won't break it. and you can see the test passed. So let's include our module or concern. And uh, let's get rid of the attribute. 
instance method and the class method. Now let's run the test again. And it passed. That means our post class has the correct properties or, or attributes and all the instance and class methods after including the visible concern. Now you might have a question. What's the point of all this? If you're just trying to abstract and encapsulate some common behavior, can't you simply create a new class? And you'd be right. You can create a class like Visibility Manager and use it like this. But if you compare both the pieces of code, one that uses concerns and one that uses the third object, you'd find that the one that uses concerns is much more readable. I find that concerns are many times just the right amount of abstraction compared to creating intermediate classes. All the methods are right there on the primary object and you don't need to introduce an object like visibility manager to access the shared code. So that's what concerns are, a way to group related methods together while still living under a single class. They make your code more readable. Alright, I hope this helped and now you have a better understanding of concerns in Rails and how they work. If you liked the video or have any feedback, please let me know in the comments. I've shared all the code examples on my blog post, which is linked in the description. Thank you. Bye now.